friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. What a privilege uh, indeed it is to come into God's presence this morning, uh, knowing that we have a God who is our friend and who cares for everything that's going on in our lives. So we want to warmly welcome you to, as we join together as a family uh, this morning, Sunday, uh, to praise and worship uh, and seek, more importantly, God's word. Uh, because God's word reminds us, uh, it refreshes us and also ref restores us, especially in times that we are in right now, in times of uncertainty and in distress, uh, as what we are facing as a nation. So let's take a moment to spend some time in prayer. Uh, so would you uh, bow down here and uh, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we just come before you as we gather our thoughts to worship and praise you as we come together as a family. We thank you for this time that we are able to connect with you, Lord Jesus, wherever we are from our, our homes and whatever may be our situations. We thank you for this time that we are able to spend with you and be reminded of that you are still in authority, Father, that you are in still control, Father. We pray that as we praise and worship you and come before you to listen to your word, that you will speak to us in a very special way. That you will speak to our hearts and that your word will guide us and that your word will be a lamp unto our feet. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you who have heartily repented with true faith and turn unto him, pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father, for being here with us today in this worship, Father, as we come together as a church to spend this time and focus on you and thank, thank you for everything that you have done for us, Father, and give you that rightful place, oh God. like to read a piece of scripture from Colossians chapter 1. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have been praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son He loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. For in Him all things were created, all things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. i 
Father, where there is hunger, where there is nothing, we pray that you, Jehovah Jireh, provides enough, like the fish and the loaves all those years ago. Father, where there is loss, we pray for reminders that in you, we know what forever really means. Where there is sickness, we pray for healing, your healing that made the blind see and the dead rise again. Where there is war, Father, we pray for wisdom to know that against all odds, you have overcome the world and in that our hope is still. Where there is fear, Lord, we remember that you have not promised us hearts of fear, but instead you promised us hearts full of power, love and peace of mind. Where there is no hope, Lord, let us rest knowing that in all things you work for the good of those who love you. For we live only in your goodness and in your goodness alone. Amen. All my
the New Testament reading is taken from Book of James, Chapter 2, reading from verses 1 to 14. Favoritism forbidden. My brothers, as believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, don't show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into a meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in shabby clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, Here is a good suit for you, but say to the poor man, You stand there or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? But you have insulted the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are slandering the noble name of him to whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. Because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Faith and deeds. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel reading is taken from St. Mark, chapter 10, reading from verses 1 to 16. Divorce. Jesus then left that place and went to the region of Judea and across the Jordan. Again crowds of people came to him, and as was his custom, he taught them. Some Pharisees came and tested him by asking, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? What did Moses command you? He replied. Then he said, Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. It was because your hearts were hard that Moses wrote you this law, Jesus replied. But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. When they were in the house again, the disciples asked Jesus about this. He answered, Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another man, she commits adultery. The Little Children and Jesus People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God, like the little, chi like the little child, will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, all. It's great to be able to share God's word uh, this morning at service. I hope that uh, all of you are practicing social distancing and uh, you all are all keeping safe. 
also by now i'm sure you have figured out that uh, everything boils down to family and that uh, all of you all are enjoying family life um, rather than uh, getting on each other's nerves uh, so interestingly today the theme we are going to look at is the lord who does all things well for family so uh, to start uh, let's go to the beginning of the bible let's go to genesis chapter 1 where uh, we find god creating the world um, and here we find uh, god creating the sun the moon the stars the fish the birds the animals and then to finish it off finish off his creation he created man and woman so here at the start itself right at the beginning we find god creating family even in today's uh, gospel reading we find these pharisees coming to jesus to test him and we are told uh, that they ask a question on divorce and jesus answers them by saying that what god created right at the start the family that he created was something that was created for a lifetime that husband and wife were to be together for a lifetime but um, while god created and his creation was perfect this also excited the devil and this is what we are told in the bible and then very soon uh, we find adam and eve falling because satan took it upon himself to attack his family and from that day onwards that is one of the missions that satan has taken upon himself and that is to destroy or to break up christian marriages um, and um, to to try and uh, attack our families um, we find that uh, satan has given the wrong impression is brought in wrong teachings about family and he has penetrated into the very center of our society uh, and managed to lower the standards of marriage and also family life so going forward uh, we'll just have a look at what uh, how god feels about family and what his his objective of uh, creating a family together is so the first thing i want to share with you today uh, is that you are chosen by god to be a part of your family you are a special person and you are chosen by god to be a member of your family uh, Jenny, uh sorry psalms uh, 139 13 and 14 says for you created my inbo- inmost being you knit me together in my mother's womb I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God created us with a plan. He none of us are born by accident. God has a plan for each of us. And the fact that we are placed in our family itself is part of that family. So if you are a person who's feeling that you're insignificant, if you're feeling that uh you know you don't belong to your family, then just uh understand this verse that god has actually put you there he has actually chosen you to be a part of your family the second one i like to share with you how god sees a family is your family as a unit is special in god's eyes you all are all special in god's eyes and as a family as a unit also your family is important to god you know in the bible there are many many examples of god uh, saving families and working through families uh, th- let's let's take the story of lot if you look at lot and his family god chose to save them from sodom now he didn't just save lot but he saved his whole household he saved his wife his daughters his sons-in-laws everyone and he saved all of them as a family 
True enough, Lot's wife um, looked back and was turned into a pillow of salt, but that was her decision. But God's intention was to save the family. Let's take Noah, another good example. Uh, God basically reset the world by bringing a flood. But he chose this whole family to, to, to get onto this ark and be saved. So a whole generation would start again and a whole family would start again. Uh, in Acts chapter 11, in the New Testament, we find uh, a man called Cornelius. God talks to him. And this is the story where Peter comes to his house and uh, shares the word of God and how he comes to know the Lord. But before Peter comes, God talks to Cornelius and he tells Cornelius that there will be a man coming and he says, I will save you and I will save you and your whole household. And that's a promise he gives Cornelius. And so we find that God many times works in families. He blesses people, but he blesses the family. And that's how God works. Then, families are the foundation to building a society and building a church. Um, it is our family life where we start to accept people or accept each other. This is where we experience love for the first time. This is where we experience forgiveness. This is where uh, we experience uh, to accept the differences of each other. And so this is the start of society. And what we learn in our family is what we take out to society. Uh, this is the same with the church. Though we all belong to a bigger family in the church, it is through our families that we build up our church. Then the next part that I want to share with you, the fourth point, is that God gives us families so that we will be able to understand His ways. Now, uh, when you come to know the Lord or when you accept the Lord, uh, the Bible talks about God's forgiveness. God talks about um, faith. God talks about various things, but sometimes these are too big for us to understand. But if we come from a family that loves each other, if we come from a family where uh, you have faith in God, uh, if we come from a family where we care for each other, then when we come to know the Lord, it is easy for us to understand what the Bible is talking about. So these are just a few points where uh, what I feel are objectives why God has created families. Now while uh, God blesses our families, we have a responsibility towards uh, this family that God has given us. So when I was preparing this message and I was going through other messages, uh, there were a few points that I picked up and I thought I will share them this morning. Uh, these are points where uh, I felt that as Christians and uh, to build up a Christian home, these points may help us this morning. So the first one is found in Genesis chapter 2 verse 24 where it says, That is why man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and they become one flesh. So the first point I like to share with you is, Man and woman are one. You know, when man and woman gets together, when they get married, we are supposed to think, uh, or our thinking, our actions, our decisions, all need to be in sync. And that is what we are expected. But you, everyone who's married, will agree that this is almost impossible or a, a, a tough ask. And it takes years for a husband and wife to work together. And this is not something that happens overnight. And God doesn't expect us to change our ways overnight. Uh, here are two people who are being brought up or who are brought up um, 
in different ways in society which with different values and they come together with different ideas so it's not an easy task but uh, god's idea of family is that man and woman work together and work together as one why because he created them to be one so that's the first point man and woman are one in the family the second point i like to share with you is that the man is the head of the house and he is called to love his family ephesians chapter 5 verse 23 it says for the husband is the head of the wife even as christ is the head of the church his body and is himself its savior you know this verse uh, is often misinterpreted um, you know when we get the picture of the husband and we are told that the man is the head of the house we picture a man sitting on a sofa with his legs up uh, watching tv uh, enjoying himself laid back uh, while everyone else in the house is running around doing his bidding but the bible says that this is not what it means when man is told that he is the head of the house the bible also says that it is very similar to christ being the head of the church now which means that as a man as the head of the house the man is expected to do the things that jesus did for the church he is called to love his family he is called to be the pastor and uh, as a man or as the husband as the leader of the family you are called to give an account to god regarding your family you as a man are expected to lead your family in or 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 to look after your family physically uh, mentally socially and more than anything spiritually ephesians 5:25 says husbands love your wives just as christ loved the church and gave himself up to her to make her holy cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless in the same way husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies so uh, this is the point i want to leave with you husbands that being the head of the house doesn't mean control it means responsibility it means that you are taking accountability for everything that happens in your home the third point that i want to share with you is about the woman the woman or the wife is the ideal helper who completes the man genesis chapter 2 verse 18 says the lord god said it is not good for man to be alone i will make a helper suitable to him the role of the wife is also often misinterpreted the world shows that the wife is always taking second place um or that the wife is helpless uh but that's not what the bible says the bible says that you as a wife are an equal partner to your husband and it is the wife together with the husband or the husband together with the wife that makes a family a marriage complete the family is actually the ultimate small group and the husband and wife together are the pastors um together they are expected to lead the family together they are expected to build 
their children. Together, they are expected to set an example to the future generation or to your children. So, to, so today, we need to remember that our actions between each other, husband and wife, plays a major role in our children's lives. Though we may not talk to our children, our children always watch us. And so, um, you will find that our children will follow our examples and our actions. And they will end up being the same um, kind of people that you are. You know, in a tough situation, you can be sure that your kids will have faith in God if you display faith when you are going through a tough time. If you are a person who is losing your patience, um, if, if, if you have road rage uh, and you can't control your temper, then your child who is seated with you will always watch this and at some point practice that. So remember that as husband and wife, you are partners and you as the wife make the husband a whole or complete and that is God's way of working. Then the fourth point is that the children are a blessing to the family. Children are always a blessing to the family. Psalm 127 verse 3 and 4 says children are a heritage from God. Offspring, uh, offspring a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Parents are expected to make time for their children. I know um, it's a it's tough life. I know that we are busy. Uh, we get caught up with work. Uh, sometimes uh, or most of the time, both of us or uh, both parents have to go to work. They come back when there is there are things to do at home, and sometimes we miss out on things with our children. But we are expected to spend time with our children. We are expected to make time for our children. Children are given on loan from God to us. And at some point, we need to give them back. And the state we give them back to God is how it will depend on how you have uh, brought them up and how they have, you have taught them. So remember that children are always a blessing. Um, they, they, they might uh, drive us nuts. Uh, they might, uh, you know, at times be difficult. But we don't give up on children. Because God has given us these children. And these children are a blessing to us and our families. A word to the children. Fifth point. Children are to obey and honor your parents. And this is also important. Uh, as a child, you have a role to play in your family. And in Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verse 1 to 3 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. And so it may go well with you, and that you may enjoy long life on earth. As a, as a child, especially uh, in your teen years, obeying parents is an impossible task and that is something that all of us even parents when we were teenagers or all of us had a time uh, obeying our parents also on the whole if you if you look at all of us at any age as we grow up as children we start suddenly start realizing uh, that our parents are getting outdated they are not keeping with the times they don't know what is happening and sometimes as children, we feel that we know better than our parents. But um, obeying parents and respecting them is the greatest honor that one can give your parents. And this is what the Bible is talking about. And um, God expects us as children to obey our parents. Uh, one more thing uh, as a child to remember is that sometimes uh, we feel left out 
sometimes we feel insignificant because our parents are doing everything or the decisions are being made by our parents but as children uh sometimes um knowingly or unknowingly uh you may be the glue that holds your family especially through tough times uh parents fathers and mothers are, are human beings and they can fall they can make mistakes and sometimes though though children don't realize it it is the children that keep the family together it is the children that bring uh the husband and wife or the father and mother together so remember that you are a blessing to your family and you are expected to obey and respect your parents right the sixth point uh, i like to share is as a family you have been given a multi generational vision uh now this means now in proverbs chapter 22 verse 6 says train up a child in the way he should go even when he is old he will not depart from it psalm 78 5 to 6 says he decreed statutes for jacob and established the law in israel which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children so that the next generation would know them even the children yet to be born and they in turn would tell their children so as a family this is as a family as father mother children we need to understand that we are working not only within this generation god has a vision for generations to come so uh, god's way is that the grandparents teach the parents who in return will teach their children and their children will go on teaching their children and becomes or goes into generations you find god blessing generations in the bible just because uh, the grandparents or the parents decided to follow god and fo- and decided to obey god and so you as a family has a task uh, in god's kingdom and that is to be an influence to the generations to come so that's my message today and just uh, while i was preparing something that god put into my heart is uh, during this lockdown how are you feeling during this lockdown um how how are you managing your family is it boring uh is there you know are you running out of ideas so here is just a suggestion uh maybe you can think of doing it and that is to to keep the family together uh if you have a goal if you have an objective uh that would help you to keep your family together and so uh i was thinking maybe as a family you can start a small ministry this can be for your family where you can choose another family in need and uh, maybe share your talents uh your treasures or whatever now if you if you do that as a family of course everyone needs to be involved even the children uh you will find things to talk about uh you will find uh, uh tasks to be done uh which actually will help you all as a family to grow and this is just just a suggestion that you can you can think of during this time especially when uh we are confined to our houses and it is only the family that we get to talk so may god bless you and your family may he keep you safe from uh this pandemic and bring you out of this pandemic safely god bless you thank you um, good morning everyone firstly i would like to thank this opportunity given to show or to testify as to how god has done so much of wonderful things in my life the pandemic situation in this country affected a lot of lives and i too was badly affected the company that i worked for 
suffered heavy losses and as a result we were to go on a salary reduction but ultimately they couldn't even pay our salaries on time. I had a lot of issues going on, a lot of problems. But my family, my wife and few close friends that I have kept on motivating me, kept on praying for me and they always told me to pray and ask God for what I need in my life. So I did start praying and after a few months everything fell into place. I I can I can hold my head up high and thank and praise God for the things that He has done. I'm thankful for my family, for the friends that I have. And God has a plan for every one of us. Even though it comes a bit too late, but He has a plan. Have faith. God bless you all. Intercessions. Our Lord Jesus said in Matthew 18 verse 19, If two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. So let us agree as I lead in intercessions. Lord God, we pray for the COVID situation in our country and the world. Let the virus disappear from the face of the earth right now in Jesus' name we say. Lord, comfort can heal those infected, especially for Samak Jaitunga who is receiving treatment in the high dependency unit at the Hambantoto Hospital. We claim healing by the stripes of our Lord Jesus Christ and we pray for those suffering breakdown of family structure due to effects of the pandemic. Many are in distress due to the death of loved ones, loss of job or earning opportunities due to implementation of lockdown procedures. Lord, meet their needs, comfort and strengthen them to go on in life and not give up. Father, give courage, strength, perseverance and also protection from COVID infection to healthcare personnel as they continue in the task of caring for those affected. We claim protection for all believers from the COVID infection according to Psalm 91.10. No evil shall befall them, nor shall any plague come near their dwelling. We also pray for the country's financial situation. We pray for a miraculous turn of events to take place as Joel Chapter 2, verse 25 states, Restore to us the years that the swarming locusts have eaten. Let us not be constrained in our thinking or be limiting your abilities, Lord God Almighty. Lord, as you called us to pray for our leaders, I urge according to 1 Timothy, chapter 2, verses 1 to 2, we petition, pray and intercede for all living on this land and for our president, the prime minister and all those in authority, that you will guide them in all they think, say and do, so that all they do will be for the good of the people and the land. We ask this so that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. Heavenly Father, we pray for everyone who was injured or suffered loss due to the Easter bombing. Comfort them and give them your healing. Lord, give them your peace that passes all understanding and help them to keep their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Help them to forgive, forget and also bless them that have wronged us as you have called us to do. We pray for our bishop and all other church leaders, that they may be inspired and guided by the Holy Spirit to lead the church towards the end time harvest which you expect us to have ready. Lord, we pray for the people in Afghanistan to whom you are revealing yourself in visions and dreams. Help them to grow 
in your ways. Protect the Christians from persecution. Help them to stay firm in their faith for your glory. Lord, we also pray for the supernatural conversion of the Taliban itself as you don't like any to perish. We ask all this in the name of Jesus, from God who hears our prayers. Amen. Please stand for the greeting of peace. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Almighty Father, creator of heaven and earth. And now we give you thanks because on the first day of the week, your son, Lord Jesus Christ, overcame death and the grave and open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, join in with the angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, might heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. Your glory. Glory, glory be to you, Lord, Lord most, most high. high. Holy indeed are you, Almighty Father, eternal sovereign, who in all your gifts and works manifests your holiness to all humanity. Holy is your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, through whom you did order the universe. And holy is your ever-blessed Spirit, who reveals all things, even the deep things of your God. Just as you yourself are holy, so also you created us in your own image, that we might live in holy fellowship. And when we disobeyed your commandments, you did not abandon us, but you guided us as a merciful father. You revealed yourself to us through the law and the prophets and through your action history. And when the time was ripe, you spoke to us specially through your son, Jesus, whom you sent into the world to share our human nature <coughs> in order that he might revive your own image in us. Jesus His loved us and sacrificed himself for us, and heralded the new age in breaking bread with his friends. On the very night that he was betrayed to suffer death upon the cross for us, the Lord Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks to Almighty Father, he broke it and gave it to the disciples to share, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner after supper, he took the cup. After giving thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of you from this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. We proclaim, we proclaim his death, death. we, we live, live by his resurrection, resurrection. We, we look for his coming, coming again. again. And so, Father, we present this bread and cup in communion with the whole church, in fellowship with all the saints, and in union with all creation. We celebrate your son's death and victory giving thanks for all that he has done for us. And we entreat you, most merciful Father, that your Holy Spirit may hallow the whole earth and us as we partake in the body and blood of your dearly beloved Son and unite us with your new creation. Accept this our sacrifice, sacrifice of, of praise, praise and, and thanksgiving. thanksgiving. Make, Make us, us one body, body in Jesus Christ, Christ, our, Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and, whom and in whom, in the, the unity of the Holy of Spirit, the Holy Spirit all, all honor and glory, and glory be, to you, be to you, Almighty, Almighty Father, Father, world, world without, without end. end. Amen. The bread which we break is it on the sharing of the body of Christ. We being many are one bread and one body. 
for we all partake of one bread. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art, who art in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread. bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses, our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We do not, not presume, presume to come to, come to this your table, merciful Lord. Lord, trusting, trusting in, our in our own righteousness, righteousness but, but in your manifold and great mercies. mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may ever more dwell in him and in us. Amen. Draw near in faith and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which were given for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Lord, I come before your throne. Lord, I come before your throne.
Give thanks to the Lord, for God is gracious. God's mercy endures forever. Almighty, Almighty God, God, we thank you for, thank feeding, you for us feeding us with the body, body and blood of your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Through, Through him, him we offer you ourselves to be a living sacrifice. sacrifice. Send, Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work your praise and glory. And glory. Amen. Amen. Lord and Father, we pray for the situation in Afghanistan. God of nations, we remember the unrest, violence. People got panic. They are leaving the country in search of secure places. We pray for your intervention. We pray for the COVID-19 situation. Pray for all the doctors, surgeons, nurses, medical staff working in the front line to eradicate, combat this virus and to treat the people for their survival and health. We pray for all those affected. Grant them, O oh Lord, good health, strength and make them strong. Pray for the leaders of the country to make wise decisions. Pray for your righteousness and kingdom. Your will be done. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Notices. Uh, there are a few important announcements to make. Uh, firstly, every Saturday confirmation classes will be held at uh, 10 a.m. on Zoom and it will continue. Uh, secondly, the COVID interim center at uh, Kandavala Rakhmalana uh, has requested essential items for daily use. Uh, and in response, uh, as a church, uh, the vicar and the board, board of wardens have decided that uh, we will uh, step in to provide essential items. And uh, if you would like to be a part of this project and contribute in any way, uh, please do contact Angelo and any of the board of wardens. Uh, let me also remind you that uh, every Sunday the services will continue to be online. Uh, thank you for joining our services and uh, please uh, do uh, share the link or share uh, with anyone who would like to be part of the service. So thank you so much.